when learning about earthquake waves, we often show diagrams like this that show how P waves travel through Earth and the refraction that happens thus causing uh, the P wave shadow zone. And we also show diagrams like this that show how S waves travel through Earth and show a uh, S wave shadow zone on Earth. Or worse yet, sometimes you see a diagram like this that tries to show both the S wave and the P wave shadow zone, and it just uh, gets very confusing and very difficult to understand. So what I'm going to do today is try to show uh, how this would look, these shadow zones would look on a three-dimensional model of Earth to hopefully make uh, more sense of these diagrams for you. All right, let's start with the P wave shadow zone. So here I have an actual globe, okay? And what I did here is this, the X will represent the focus of this particular earthquake. And what I drew on here is the dark lines represents all of the locations on Earth, seismic stations that would record P waves. So you see, here's the focus here. And if, and you make sense, you can see all of it here and here and here. If you go over to the other side of it, so it does get the P waves here, but it has this sort of band around here, you know, sort of a donut shape. That is the area that we call the P wave shadow zone that will not receive P waves. And what those diagrams are trying to show is that the P waves get refracted um, at different layers of the inner earth and is usually most notable at the um, mantle outer core boundary. So this is what it will actually look like on a three-dimensional um, model of earth and I think that really helps make sense of that diagram more. Okay and then this is a different globe and it shows the where S waves will be received. So uh, similarly, that would be where the focus of the earthquake is. And now in green, all of this area shows uh, locations, if there's seismic stations there, that would receive S waves traveling through Earth. And you can see them here, a large area gets S waves. But let's go to the other side here. And a big chunk of the other side of the Earth does not receive any S waves. And basically, when we see that and when they when they first started seeing that uh they had to figure out why and uh knowing something about how s waves travel and that s waves don't travel through liquid rock that is how they can basically infer that the uh outer core is liquid or liquid ish rock uh that stops the S waves from traveling through, and that is why you have this very large S wave shadow zone here. And uh, that is what those diagrams are trying to show. I think it really helps, again, to relate this to those diagrams. I'm Mr. Gaz, and I hope that clears up S wave and P wave shadow zones, at least a little bit.